And now to the biggest story in the state right now. The Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxton, has been booked in a jail with all the fixings. Fingerprints, a mugshot. The state's top prosecutor surrendered this morning to authorities in Collin County. That is near Dallas. He's been indicted on felony charges. Specifically, he's accused of misleading investors in a Texas tech startup before he took office back in January. That company is now under investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Following this story from the beginning is Ross Ramsey. He is the executive editor of the Texas Tribune. Mr. Ramsey, good afternoon to you. Hi, how are you? Good. Let me ask you. So we're talking about the Texas Attorney General. There's one guy in the state of Texas who should know the law. It's this guy. So how did we end up here? How did he end up in jail this morning? Well, he's accused, as you said, of some securities fraud violations that um, involve his private business. This is th these are things he did as a private lawyer, not as a state official or as a candidate. And some of these charges, the initial pieces of this came up during the 2014 campaign. His Republican primary opponents brought it up, ran ads about it. Voters said, we want him to be attorney general anyway, and, and now here we are. So let me ask you, there are two felony charges that he is facing. Can you explain what exactly these charges are? What, in, in simple terms, what did he do wrong or allegedly do wrong? Well, there's, there's three charges. Two of them, as you say, are first degree felonies. First degree felonies carry penalties if you're convicted of five to 99 years or life and $10,000 in fines. He's accused of telling investors and potential investors in a company called Servergy Incorporated that uh, A, that he was an investor too. That turned out to be wrong. That's a misrepresentation and that's one of the charges. The other one is that he didn't tell them that he was being compensated for trying to bring them into the company, um, which is uh, another version of fraud also involving more than $100,000. The third charge is a third degree felony and it is for um, not uh, registering as a financial agent um, and not telling his law clients that he was receiving compensation for referring them to an investment company. So by now we've all seen that mugshot where Mr. Paxton showed up at the Collin County Jail. He went in, he's in a suit, he had a slight grin on his face. What happened after that? Once the mugshot took place, there, there really weren't a whole lot of people who saw him go in and out of the building. No, you remember when Rick Perry was indicted a year ago, or almost a year ago, he went out uh, to the courthouse, he waved to everybody when he went in, he came out, he had kind of a press conference, they called it a rally. Uh, he went down to a place in Austin called Sandy's and had a soft serve ice cream and um, grinned for the camera. It was kind of a show. Ken Paxton went the other way. He went in to the jail uh, quietly through a back door. Uh, his lawyer came out afterwards and said he wouldn't be making a statement, and that was it. There was no show there. You bring up Rick Perry in your article that's online right now at texastribune.org. You say that there is some comparison between what's happening here with what happened with former Governor Perry and U.S. House Majority Leader Tom DeLay. Some are saying this is political football. This is just political mess that's happening. Um, what are the Republicans saying about this? Uh, they're, they're being very, very circumspect, circumspect on this one. If you'll remember the Rick Perry thing, uh, people were jumping to his defense even before there was an indictment uh, in his row with the Travis County District Attorney. After the indictment, uh, you know, lawyers and political people and even a lot of journalists were saying, you know, this is crazy. These are political charges. This is nuts. It'll go away. In Paxton's case, everyone has been very circumspect about it. They don't know the details, didn't know any of the details until today. And now that they do, we're getting statements from people like the governor and the lieutenant governor saying an indictment is just an allegation. It is not a conviction. He'll have his day in court and kind of stopping it right there. They're not making all of the allegations or not making all of the, not blasting anybody for political charges or anything like that. What about the other side? We, uh, of course, have heard from some Democrats and liberal groups who say, look, this guy's got to step down now. Well, they're crowing. It's interesting, if you've been around Texas politics for a long time like I have, you can remember the Democrats being quiet when Jim Maddox was um, indicted as Attorney General in 1983 and the Republicans calling for him to, re re to resign. That part of this is politics, but the legal piece of this doesn't, at this point, appear to be. 
Your article says that uh, Mr. Paxton's going to go back to Austin. He's going to do his job uh, just like any other day. He'll be, he'll be back to serve the people of Texas. But with the case, what happens from this point on? What, what's next? Well, you know, you'll have the regular legal chain of events. You'll have, you know, his lawyers will decide whether or not they're going to challenge the indictments. We'll go through, you know, that. Then the judge will presumably set a court date and we'll go forward from there. Nothing in Texas law tells the attorney general that he has to act differently after an indictment than he did before the indictment. He can still run the office. He's still qualified. It is just an accusation. And, you know, he can proceed from here. Uh, there may be some political calls for it. Um, if there are other details here that could be politically damaging, we may get some political effects. But they're going to let the legal course proceed. And, you know, two things can happen here. If he is ultimately acquitted in this, it might make his career. Kay Bailey Hutchison was indicted and acquitted and was a Republican superstar after that. Um, Jim Maddox was also acquitted. He got reelected as attorney general, almost won the Democratic gubernatorial nomination. Paxton could come out of this smelling like a rose or it could end his political career. There's a lot more details to this online right now. You can go check out texastribune.org and included in that article online, uh, there are also the actual indictments also. Ross Ramsey, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We'll also follow this here on KBTX and KBTX.com. Coming up next, another Thanks look for at your me. forecasts. We're back after this. You're watching.